Okay, today we're going to talk about the alimentary canal, also known as the digestive system. Uh, we need to know some terms before we start talking. Um, first of all, don't let the term alimentary canal um, discourage you or make you worried at all. The term alimentary canal is basically just a big long term that means the path that food takes from your mouth through your tush. Okay? So the path that food goes from your mouth going through your whole body and out your tush is called the alimentary canal. Now, ingestion is when you take food into your mouth. So that's ingestion. Digestion is broken into two different parts. There's physical digestion, which is when your boss body basically um, breaks down food physically. It's when you chew food with your teeth, when you roll it around with your tongue, when your stomach turns food around inside of itself. We call that physical digestion. And then you have chemical digestion. Chemical digestion is when your body makes different enzymes and makes different chemicals to help break down food. So digestion is the breaking down of food into smaller pieces. Then you've got absorption. Absorption is when your body absorbs nutrients or takes nutrients into the cells. Uh, um, usually it happens mostly in the small intestine. Assimilation is when that, the, those nutrients are basically spread throughout your body. And finally, ingestion is when anything that your body did not digest comes out your tush. Um, and that's called egestion. So guys, if you have the ability to print, I would print this slide and put it into your science notebook, if at all possible, because it pretty much covers everything. I'm going to run you through the slide very quickly, and then, but don't worry, because we are going to talk about the things that are on this slide further on in detail. So this is going to be a quick overview of the alimentary canal and the digestive system. We will get into more detail in future slides. Well, food is first ingested into your mouth. Your teeth chew up the food and break it down into smaller pieces. Your tongue rolls it around and helps break it into smaller pieces. Your salivary glands, there are three of them. One is called the sublingual, one is the submaxillary, and one is the parotid. Again, you're going to read about those in your book, so don't worry about it if you don't get them run down right now. But your salivary glands basically release um, chemicals, saliva, and, and different enzymes into your mouth to help break down the food. And finally, after this part over here with your teeth chewing and your tongue moving food is called physical digestion. The salivary glands part with the, with the saliva moistening food is called chemical digestion. All of that works together inside your mouth until you get this ooey gooey little round piece of food called a bulbous. Okay. Um, if you've ever watched a baby and you've ever seen a baby spit out, or not really a baby, but a toddler spit out food, you'll notice they spit it out in a little round gooey chunk. That real round gooey chunk is called a bulbous. And that bulbous, it turns out, is the perfect size to go down your esophagus to get to your stomach. So that bulbous, your tongue eventually allows you to swallow that bulbous. It comes into your pharynx. Now right here on this side, this little tube right here is called your windpipe. Okay? And basically there's something, a little flap of skin called a glottis. And the glottis covers over your windpipe when you swallow food so that food doesn't go down into your lungs. Okay? And when you're breathing, it covers over your basically your esophagus so the air doesn't fill up your stomach and make your stomach explode. So this little glottis covers up the different holes depending on what you're doing. Okay? When you're eating, it covers over your windpipe so food doesn't get in your lungs. And the bulbous, or the food, travels down your pharynx into your esophagus. Inside of your esophagus, your esophagus muscles basically contract and release, contract and release, contract and release. And that process is called peristalsis. And that pushes the food down into your stomach. Okay. Again, we're going to see a slide later on with the word peristalsis in it. So if you don't know how to spell it, don't worry about it right yet. Um, once the food gets into your stomach, your stomach releases hydrochloric acid and different enzymes to help break the food down into even smaller chunks. It then travels into your small intestine, into the top of your small intestine right here. That top part is called your duodenum. And your duodenum has two little tubes hooked into it. One tube comes from your liver, and your liver passes something called bile into your duodenum, your small intestine. And that bile is used to help break down fats so that they can be used by the body. The other tube comes from this little organ called your pancreas. And that tube basically goes into your duodenum, your small intestine, and it releases um, enzymes called protease and amylase, which help your body digest and be able to use carbohydrates and proteins. 
So once those things come into your small intestine and that's all digested, all of those nutrients travel through all of your small intestines and they get absorbed into your body. So the nutrients are absorbed into your body through your small intestines until so finally they go into your large intestines. Anything too big to be absorbed or anything that's toxic or not good for you doesn't get absorbed and it goes into your large intestine. And then that travels, your large intestine, basically the last little bit of nutrients that can be absorbed are absorbed. A lot of the water that has been traveling through your whole system is absorbed. And finally, your undigested remains of your food, the stuff that can't be digested, the fiber, the particles that are too large, the particles that aren't good for you, all those end up going into your rectum and getting packed into your rectum as feces, also known as poop. Once you get enough feces packed into your rectum, you have a bowel movement and it comes out your anus and exits your body. That is basically the alimentary canal, the path from your mouth through your whole body and out your tush. So now we're going to go into a little more detail on each one. Your mouth is where you ingest your food. You eat your food. Again, your teeth chew the food. That's called physical digestion. Your tongue turns the food over, that's called physical digestion. And your salivary glands release amylase and other enzymes that help break down the food. Um, and then the food ends up being turned into a bolus, which is basically a tiny little circle of ooey, gooey, wet, sticky food. And that ooey, gooey, wet, sticky bolus food travels down your esophagus. This, guys, people spell esophagus in different ways. Some way people spell it with an O, some people leave the O off. Your esophagus then takes that food and basically it contracts and releases, contracts and releases, contracts and releases the muscles. That's called peristalsis. Okay. Those rhythmic waves push the food down into your stomach. Here's a picture, guys. The food comes into your mouth. It's turned over. It's turned into a bolus. When it's turned into a bolus, you swallow it. It comes into your pharynx here. Remember I told you this glottis basically covers over your windpipe so food can't get into your lungs. The bolus goes down into your esophagus and peristalsis, the contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing of muscles, pushes that food down into your stomach. In your stomach, the physical digestion that happens there is your stomach basically churns and turns the food over and over again. The chemical digestion, jet digestion is that your stomach releases hydrochloric acid and protease and other enzymes to help break the food down into smaller and smaller parts. So just focus on this picture up here, guys. Don't worry about these. They just happen to be on the slide with it. Um, this is your stomach. The food comes into your stomach. The gastric juices, the hydrochloric acid, the enzymes break it down into smaller parts. And this thing right here, this pyloric sphincter is basically, a sphincter, guys, is basically a circle muscle. And it's a circle muscle that can open up and create a hole and then close and shut the hole. So at the end of your stomach, you have this circular muscle that closes until all of this food is broken down into small enough pieces that it can safely travel through your intestine. Once this food is broken down into small enough pieces, the sphincter will open and allow those itty bitty tiny little nutrients and pieces out into your small intestine. Here are the other organs that help with your digestive system. You've got your liver. Your liver, again, is connected to your small intestine, the duodenum part of it, the top part of it, through this little tube. Okay, and it releases bile into the duodenum so that you can break down fats. Your pancreas releases protease and amylase into the duodenum so you can break down proteins and carbohydrates through this little tube. And then your gallbladder, guys, is basically a little storage area that holds extra bile that your liver makes. And if your liver isn't making quite enough bile at the moment, you can use the extra from your gallbladder. Guys, the gallbladder is not a super important organ. You may have heard of people who have had gallbladder surgery and actually had this removed. Okay? Um, you can remove your gallbladder and be just fine. The bile then just always comes from your liver and it's not stored inside of anywhere. Okay? Um, however, your liver and your pancreas are super important to you. Without them, or at least a portion of your liver, you will perish. So your liver creates bile. It's a yellowish green watery liquid. Um, it's used to break down fats. The breaking down of fats is called emulsification. Your liver also does many other things for you. It basically helps maintain your sugar levels or your glucose levels in your bloodstream. 
It helps remove toxins and poisons and different things that are toxic from your bloodstream. It produces bile to help you break down fats. Your liver actually takes old red blood cells that are no good anymore and converts them to bilirubin um, so that it can get rid of them. And it also helps regulate your cholesterol and your other fat levels. Your pancreas creates these enzymes, amylase, protease, and lipase. Amylase helps you break down carbohydrates. Protease helps you break down proteins. And lipase helps you break down, break down fats. Your pancreas actually also secretes sodium bicarbonate into your stomach to help relieve um, heartburn if you have too much stomach acid. So if your stomach acid builds up too much, your pancreas actually releases the sodium bicarbonate into your stomach to help calm it down. Sodium bicarbonate, guys, is a fancy word for baking soda. So if you've ever had, if anybody's ever told you to, to take a, a, some baking soda and put it in water and drink it if your stomach is upset, um, your pancreas basically does this for you as well. And then your gallbladder stores bile. So your small intestines, the top is called the duodenum, the bottom is called the ileum. Um, your small intestines basically take and neutralize acids from your stomach. They digest your food and break your food down into smaller and smaller pieces using bile from the liver and um, other enzymes from the pancreas. Um, and they break everything down and then they absorb all the nutrients. 95% of your food that's absorbed is absorbed in your small intestine. Some other small intestine fun facts are your small intestine is about 5 meters long in an adult. That's approximately 15 feet. Um, the reason why it's so long is because being long gives your body more time to absorb the nutrients because it's got a longer path to travel through. Your small intestine is highly folded. All 15 feet of intestine are basically crammed into your lower stomach area. And the reason why it's highly folded is because that increases the surface area and allows you to absorb more nutrients. Finally, um, there's a hepatic portal vein that carries amino acids and sugars from your small intestine to your liver um, where they can be sorted out and used by the rest of the body. Don't worry about that bottom part too much. So again, your small intestine has two parts. The duodenum is where the bile and the pancreatic juice are put in so that they can break down the food even farther into the nutrients. And then the farther down inside your small intestine is the ileum. That's where the food is basically absorbed. So again, bile comes through this tube into your duodenum. Pancreatic enzymes come through this tube into your duodenum. Gallbladder bile comes into your duodenum through the tube. All that stuff gets broken down in your duodenum, and it can be absorbed as it travels through the rest of your small intestine, known as your ileum. Finally, anything that does not get digested or anything that does not get absorbed by your small intestine ends up traveling into your large intestine. In your large intestine, the final little bits of nutrients are actually absorbed. And also a lot of the water that has been traveling through your system with the food so far is absorbed. Your large intestine is where waste is eliminated. Um, substances found in your large intestine are water, which ends up getting absorbed by your large intestine, dead bacterial cells. Remember, guys, we said in our last unit that fiber can't be digested. It can't be absorbed. So any kind of fiber actually is in there. Any other di indigestible materials. Your entire large intestine is covered by a lining of mucus inside. And that mucus helps move and helps lubricate and move all of that um, feces and all of those dead cells and fiber through the large intestine. And finally, you that all that indigested, undigested matter um, packs into something called your rectum. It's at the end of your large intestine. And once you get enough of it packed in there, you have a bowel movement. And all of that food travels out of your body through your anus. Your anus is another sphincter. Okay. Remember, a sphincter is a round circular muscle that can open up a hole and shut a hole. And so basically when you get enough um, undigested material packed into your rectum, your anus sphincter will open up and you are able to then move that waste out of your body. Um, last couple things here. We, here are some of the enzymes that your digestive system uses. Amylase is released by the salivary glands in your mouth and released um, by the pancreas into your duodenum. And it basically breaks down starches and carbohydrates. Protease is released by your stomach. It's called pepsin. And it's also released by the, your pancreas into your duodenum. It's called trypsin there. And it actually breaks down proteins. And finally, lipids are also known as fats. So when we talk about fats, we're talking about lipids. 
And lipase is released by your pancreas and your duodenum. And it's also released by your ileum, and it helps break down fats. Bile from your liver also helps break down those fats.